Father Christopher Friel will be saying this Mass with us, and we welcome all visitors to Mass tonight. A thought to take with us into the week. As we live to follow Jesus' way, we ask ourselves, am I a good shepherd? Please stand as we sing together.
us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And that is what we are. 
Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to He's dead, he is risen to 
heaven to his father, and just because he's gone, it doesn't mean to say everything is finished, because he has given us that same gift of healing as well. And here is the man, the crippled man, no longer crippled, to prove that I have worked this through the name of Jesus, the risen one. And that's what the Acts of the Apostles is all about. Um, extraordinary works by the Apostles after the resurrection of Jesus and in the name of Jesus. It's always in the name of Jesus. We had a lovely mass this morning here at 11 o'clock for Sister Sue Cosgrove and Sister Deshane, um, Home of Compassion Sisters, who were celebrating their diamond and their gold jubilees. And uh, the gospel of the day was something similar, and um, the great healing that was involved in that, another healing of St. Peter, is just one after the other that we continue to hear. And it emboldens us as well. And the Gospel of John, uh, that very famous chapter, chapter 10, where Jesus, the image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. Um, there are so many images. I was in Greymouth uh, just after uh, Easter, and the Paschal candle they have there, the most extraordinary Paschal candle I've seen. They have a great artist over there. And down below here, she had painted that very um, ancient depiction of Jesus as the Good Shepherd with the lamb over his shoulders um, from a sort of 4th or 5th century icon and it's a beautiful image. I text the parish priest a couple of days ago saying I hope you use your pastoral handle during your um, holiday this weekend as a bit of a reminder because sometimes we can forget um, what we've got in front of us. But um, that image of the Good Shepherd is one of the most known of Jesus. It's a, it's a lovely image for us to have, that caring, uh, gentle man who will go to the inth to help us. Shepherds in the time of Jesus were as bad as tax collectors. They couldn't uh, go to court and be a witness in court, and they couldn't do lots of things in society because they dealt with um, dirty, cloven animals along the way. And uh, so to be a shepherd in the day of Jesus, you were sort of ostracized and you were moving the small group of sheep that you had from one place to the other to get more grass, more water. You were probably walking over someone's property so people were throwing stones at you. It wasn't a good life. But the image that we have is Jesus, he will care more for the sheep than for himself. And that's what story is coming from us for our gospel today. That's what Jesus is saying um, he is going to be like for us now. Because he wasn't the shepherd uh, in his day, but he's saying that after his death and resurrection, he will care for us as much as a shepherd would care for a sheep. And we see that uh, he went to the, the tenth degree of giving himself up to death for us. And that's what he's saying here in St. John as well. So let's go home from this night. Hopefully we'll get a bit more rain on our roofs, more than just washing the dust of our cars. That um, we will remember that Jesus is there. That uh, the shepherd uh, image that has been revealed to us once again tonight is very close. And uh, how careful the Lord walks with us day by day.
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and to sing that will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son, which is all the Lord of life. justly and with hearts filled with confidence we now pray for our holy father pope francis and all who have positions of leadership or authority in the church may they be inspired by jesus the good shepherd committed to the care of those they serve lord hear us lord hear our prayer for all defense and auxiliary personnel who gave their lives to preserve the freedom. May they live forever in the peace that only Christ can give. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, especially from our own parish community. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer that our parish may grow in holiness and in our dedication to evangelization. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, especially Dawn Beard. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you sent your Son and raised him from the dead so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Keep us obedient to our new life in Christ, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. <laughs> we may always find delight in these pastoral mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbour to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name, and sing the hymn of your glory, as with our end we acclaim. and who you have seated at your right hand, 
We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, Archbishop Paul, with all bishops, priests and deacons, and the entire people you have made for your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labour and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place, and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Apostles and Martyrs, St. Joseph and Thomas, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever.
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
any help will be gratefully accepted. It's always a great day as well. And I'm sure there'll be a couple of bottles of bubbles floating around this way to keep us all going. So someone see. And we have, what else have we got going on? I'm away next weekend. My great friend, Father Craig Dunford, um, has for the last four years in his parish, literally every Saturday they've had to put all the chairs out in their large um, high school every Saturday afternoon for their masses. They have about 1,200 people that turn up to four or five masses over the weekend. So finally, I've got a brand new church out at Flatbush, which is right beside the airport. So I'm going up there for the consecration of that church uh, next weekend. So it will be a great do up there, one hopes. So keep them in your prayers there as well. It's the, uh, what else have we got happening? Everything else you can have a read of, and tomorrow obviously is Anzac Day, so we keep our fallen. We all have people who fell in uh, the past two wars and other wars, so we keep them in our prayers and uh, those in our armed forces as well currently, and keeping them safe. Let's stand and pray. Graciously be present to your people, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace and the love of the Lord. Thank you.